imagine this. It's time for your class to go to lunch. You say, time for lunch, let's line up. You're caught off guard by what you see next. Kids are racing to be first, pushing each other, and in the end, they're all squished together in a line. It makes you wonder, is the lunchroom handing out free ice cream today? But in reality, you realize that you forgot to teach your kids what lining up looks like to you. Today, I am going to share with you five ways to help prevent lineup chaos. No more racing to be first, pushing or arguments in your line. Before we get started, I would love if you would take just one second and hit that like and subscribe button so you don't miss any future videos. All right, so here's what you're gonna to wanna to do first. First, you are gonna to wanna to take your class list and you're gonna to wanna to give each student a number. These are called student numbers. I personally love to alphabetize by first name, but you, most teachers, like to alphabetize by last name. So it's completely up to you. And this is going to help with so many things. First of all, you can use these numbers for more than just lineup numbers. You can also use them to label things around your classroom. Instead of labeling with students' names, you can put their student number and then it helps you have to change out your labels less each year. In kindergarten, I like to, on their name tag, on their desk, I write their student number right there so that they don't forget it or if they need to go reference it, then they can reference it. All right, so what you're gonna do is once your kids have your numbers, that's like their number, like I'm number two, I'm always gonna be standing on dot or whatever it is, number two that's on the floor. So I have an example of what I've used in the past, just something like a circular piece of paper or I've seen teacher, if you have carpet, you could use like the Velcro dots and you could write on those. This one I just wrote on, these are printed. And you're gonna to wanna to make sure that as you put these down, that you're going to want to space them out so that your kiddos have enough standing room. This helps prevent that like smushed on top of each other line because each kid has a spot and they know exactly where to stand. This also helps our line to get a little bit straighter because you, they already, you have it in a straight line. So you might be wondering, okay, like how do you attach these? So if I just have using like a piece of paper or even like bulletin board pieces that I wrote numbers on, the way that I attach them is I lay them on the floor and I put a piece of clear packing tape over them. And honestly, that has lasted me all year. I've never had to go through and replace them. And then I just go through and pull them up at the end of the year and then remake them the following year when they need to come through and do the floors. So you might be wondering, if you're not in your classroom, how are students getting in number order? And I would say there's two sides to that coin. So the first side is that it's okay if they're not always in number order. This is just a way for your kids to kind of know where to line up and help your line have less chaos. But if they're coming from art and they're not in number order, that's okay. Now, if you see your lines start to kind of get some chaos and there's some arguments about who's supposed to be where, it's an easy fix. All you do is say, okay guys, I see that we're having some arguments. Let's get a number order and your kids will adjust themselves. If they need help, you'll have your class list to help them go through and put themselves in number order. It's also really nice because it's a nice way that for fire drills and things like that, that you can easily see who's missing by the numbers is one of my favorite things. So tip number two is that some of these placeholders are actually also student jobs. So, okay, so here's what mine would look like on the floor. My very, very first spot is my line leader. My line leader is whoever's leading the line. Now, what I do like about this is by using student jobs in place, in addition to the numbers, is that it allows students, none of my students have ever argued 
over who's first or who's where because they all get a turn to be first, second, last, and right before last. And so the rest of the kids are just all in the middle. So first we have the line leader. Second is gonna be my door holder. I like my door holder to be second because as I'm trying to go through, I need my door holder to hold the door. And then we will hold the line and let our door holder walk back up to their spot. Um, or you could just have them join the end. That's gonna be up to you and how you wanna do your class. So after line leader and door holder, then you're gonna have all your spots. One, two, three, four, five, and so on. Don't forget that however many kids that you have in your class on your roster initially, make sure to add at least three for your ghost children that might come because you never know, you might get new kids and you don't wanna have to like redo all the dots. So make sure you add extra. After I finish going to say 24, then after that number is going to be my light manager. This is my person who, as they are walking out the door, they turn off the light. Now you might wanna have your light manager, um, I've also had them like closer to the front of the line. So you can have it, whatever work is working best for you. And then my very last person is gonna be my caboose, or I like to call him like a line monitor because they're monitoring that everybody's kind of in the line and that like they're making sure they're the end. They're one of the important people making sure that our whole class is there together. And I like to put a lot of emphasis on that job of being that line monitor. All right, so now that we have all of our students lined up and they're not smashing each other and they all have their personal space, you might be wondering though, okay, so how do I get them to those spots? And so to get them to their spot, we are actually going to line up our students just a few at a time. I don't usually say, okay, line up, and everybody, 20 kids walk to the same area. That creates a little bit of chaotic madness that is just not what I like. So what I like to do is I like to first, my favorite way to line up students is by table number. I look for which table is on task or cleaned up or the quietest and I will start with them. I'll say, oh, I'm gonna have to come back to table one. Table two, you look really nice and quiet. Please push in your chairs and walk to line up. You wanna make sure that you put those extra directions in there to push in their chairs and to walk because our kids, we all know, need lots and lots of reminders. And as those students get about halfway to the line, then I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna call another group. This just gives them a, like a couple of seconds of a head start and it keeps kids from being one on top of another. It really gives just enough time. Some other fun things that you can do is, I also like to sometimes pull in academics. So maybe as we're doing like colors, color of the week, then our color of the week is yellow. Whoever's wearing yellow today can line up first. And then maybe I'll go through the rainbow or you know, you could go by like types of shoes. You can go by letters. For example, you could say like, if you have an M in your name, you can go line up. Maybe that's like our letter of the day, or you could do birthdays. You know, for example, it's September. If you have a birthday in September, you can go line up. So just things like that, that you can really incorporate academics into your lining up, which makes it fun. Just try not to, just try to make it match where your kids are at. You might not want to go by like the date of their birthday in kindergarten and the beginning of the year, because if nobody knows what their date is, then it's going to take you forever to line up. And ideally your goal is to get them to line up in a couple of minutes and walk out the door. Speaking of walking out the door, my tip number four is right before you walk out the door, you're going to want to use a song or a chant. This one's my favorite, but there are so many out there that you should find one that really works for you. So right before we walk out the door, say, and I'll start like one, two, and I have it posted by the door so they can read it. But we also, as you start it, right, they memorize it and it will go easily after you've taught it for the first week or so. One, two, check my shoes. So when they do that, they're checking their shoes. They're making sure they're on the dot and that they're facing forward, that they're not facing to the side or talking to their friend. They'll turn around, they're facing. 
three, four, face the door. Then their eyes are looking at the door at the back of the person's head in front of them. Five, six, close my lips. Seven, eight, line up straight. Nine, 10, let's begin. And as soon as I say that, I start walking because that's the one thing that I love about like a chant over a song is that it's quick. As soon as I say one, two, we're basically walking out the door in five seconds. And that's what I love about it. It gets everybody ready, turned around, their voices get turned off and they're walking out the door. All right, our last tip, tip number five is actually the most important. And that is to teach, practice and practice some more especially in kindergarten or the younger grades. Obviously, I do feel that this is even important in the older grades. If you haven't explicitly taught what your expectations are, it is hard for our students to meet them. You are going to need to teach. What does it look like? What are we using these dots for? Um, what's our number? How do we get there? How are we getting to our line? All of those things you're gonna have to teach and practice, practice, practice. I also really love to use videos and photos to help my class get better. So maybe I will take a, if whatever we're struggling with, I'll take a video or a photo of. If our line for some reason is always a wavy mess, I'll take a photo, I'll put it up on my screen for the next day for morning meeting and say, look at our line. So it looks straight to you guys. And then I always like to get their input on the solving the problem. And I'll say, you know, what can we do to make our line look more straight like this? You know, maybe you have a photo of a straight line to use it as an example, and they can come up with ideas. How can we get our line more straight? If our line's too noisy, I'll take a very short video and I'll show them the video the next day and be like, what voice level were we on when we ran our line? Oh yeah, that is definitely, too loud. What voice are we supposed to be on? How can we get there? How can we get better? And then I'll take a video that day and say, okay, did we improve? Did we get better? And I love that feedback cycle because it gives them the chance to help solve the problem. And then they get to see if they really did better. I would love if you would take a second and leave a comment below and tell me if you have any questions about ways to get your students to line up even faster go ahead and feel free to leave me a comment in the comments below. And I will see you guys next time. Thank you for joining along.